We're back for more action here in Red Typhoon. We go to the Soviet player turn. In the first phase is the activation points phase. The Soviets receive seven activation points. The Soviets had four activation points left from the prior turn, plus the seven they receive now. So they have 11 activation points available for this turn. You see the situation at the beginning of this second turn. In the southernmost sector, we see the Russian uh, B front scoring off against the second Panzer army. Not much action there, but we've seen elements of the second Panzer army, especially the armored divisions moving in order to uh, plug some gaps. But there's still room for the Russians to advance on their way to Sukhinichi. The line has not been uh, closed definitely there. The Russians have captured Kaluga, so we will see further advances by the WL front. See, the German 4th Army has fallen back uh, a few miles, as well as units from the uh, 4th Panzer Army. We see their mosaic uh, is ripe to be taken by the Russian units of the WR front. Furthermore, we see to the north, uh, the 1st Shock Army is not in contact with any enemy units, so uh, it will be advancing and attacking. In the Kalinin front sector, we see most of uh, those units in contact with German units, so not much movement there, but a lot of attacking to do in this turn. And finally, to the north, the Soviets were able to cross the river and push back uh, German units there, uh, but they don't have a lot of forces concentrated in that sector. So uh, it is doubtful that we will see more attacks uh, from the units of that uh, N uh, front. So that's the situation at the beginning of turn two. Remember the, the onus here of the attack falls on the Soviets. We place an activation point marker in the corresponding box for the WL front for movement. Here we see the positions of the units of the WL front before movement. And here we see the positions after movement and the WL front has taken a very aggressive stance. They have practically surrounded the German 216th uh, division at uh, this uh, town here, Sukinichi. So we will be seeing attacks against the units in the town and these will be isolated so there's going to be a plus one for the soviets attacks also will be seen against this uh, panzer division of the second panzer Armee, and also against this uh, lone infantry division here of the uh, fourth army we see also that the uh, soviets have surrounded the german uh, 15th division here in this wooded area so uh during the combat phase, the WL front has a lot of cleaning up to do and they can still open more gaps in the line. Now remember, the Russians don't have the plus two surprise modifier for turn two. Now moving uh, to the north of the line, we see that the uh, fourth army units fell back and uh, the Russian WR front has uh, some terrain to gain and some uh, units to attack of both these formations. So the Soviets spend their second activation point to activate the WR front for movement. And we've seen a very aggressive move by the WL front. And can the WR front replicate these moves? It seems that the line is closed here by German units, but there's a lot of hexes with single German units, so uh, there's a good opportunity to make some uh, strong attacks. And here we see the positions of the units of the WR front after movement. Straight head on attacks against the line of uh, units, basically Panzer Grenadier divisions here holding Mosaisk. We see these two German infantry divisions practically surrounded. So we'll see. Uh, very strong attack there. Further north, with the first shock army, there's additional Russian units that are attacking three 
Panzer Grenadier units to the northwest of Volokolamsk. So uh, we will see heavy attacks there. And uh, in the movement phase of the Kalinin Front, we can expect to see uh, these units join here, the units of the WR Front, so that in the combat phase, these units will be isolated. So let's take a look at the situation with the units of the Kalinin Front. There, most of them, of them are already in contact with German units, but it's going to be now their time to move. So we use a third activation point to activate the Kalinin Front for movement. These two Soviet units of the Kalinin Front will move to take a position and surround the German Panzer Grenadier units. And not much movement is performed by the remaining units. That's the end of the movement phase for the Kalinin Front. Let's move to the northernmost sector here. And we see the units of the N Front, and they have already crossed the river. And these are the positions after movement. So the X expand their fourth activation to point. activate the units of the N Front for movement. In the southernmost sector, the one held by the units of the B Front, there's uh, not a lot of movement to be made. They're just holding the line there. So those units will not move. And that's the end of the Soviet movement phase for turn two. So now we proceed to the Soviet combat phase. We'll start by taking a look at the attacks by the Soviet WL front. So we spend a fifth activation point to activate that front for attack. So we start with the attack on the third Panzer Division. A three to one attack in wooded terrain, that is with a minus one die roll modifier. The roll is a two modified to a one contact, so both forces stay put. And that's a huge break for the Germans because that means that the 3rd Panzer Division is not disrupted. Now we go to the Soviet attack on the German Infantry Division holding Sukhinichi. This is a 2-1 to one attack. There's a minus 1 for the city, but a plus 1 because the defenders are isolated. So it's a net die roll modifier of 0. And a 1, just awful luck, attacker retreats. These die rolls are just throwing a wrench into the... Russian offensive, so all three units must retreat one hex and are disrupted. Now we move on to the attack on the German 292nd Division. A 3 to 1 attack with a minus 1 for the forest. A 2 modified to a 1 contact. So the Germans hold. And we just witnessed three unfortunate attacks by the WL front that had a promising value and they just went south and uh, the last attack will be against the German 15th division infantry division which is surrounded a four to one attack with a minus one for the woods the result is a six modified to five defender retreats three hex and the defenders are surrounded by enemy zones of control they cannot retreat so the German 15th division is eliminated and one of the Russian units advances into the vacated hex. And that's the end of the attacks by the WL front. Next, the Soviets spend a sixth activation point to activate the WR front for attack. So now we see that the units of the WR front are in contact with many uh, single German divisions. See two Soviet units, 10 to 3, that's a 3 to 1 attack. And there is a river between all attackers and defenders, so it's a minus 1 die roll modifier. Result is a 4 modified to a 3, and defenders retreat 1 hex. Retreat across the river, one of the attacking units advances and occupies the vacated hex. Next, the two Soviet units that occupied Mozaisk. 15 combat factors attack the 36th Panzer Grenadier Division. This is a 5 to 1 attack with no modification. The result is a 4. Defender retreats 4 hexes. And the unit is retreated 4 hexes in this direction and flipped to its disrupted side. The Soviets advance both units into the vacated hex. Next, 
we see four stacks of Soviet units, 28 combat factors attacking two German infantry divisions with eight combat factors. That's a three to one attack. And uh, they are not isolated because they can trace a line of communications through the uh, friendly 87th Infantry Division and from there to a road hex leading off to the uh, western edge of the map. So they are not isolated. However, if called upon to retreat, they cannot retreat through enemy zones of control. In this game, uh, friendly units do not negate enemy zones of control for purposes of retreat. So it's a three to one attack with no modification. The result is a six. Defender retreats three hexes. Because the defenders cannot retreat, they are eliminated. And the Soviets advance into the vacated hex. The Germans now have three eliminated units. And the last attack by units of the WR front. This attack involves the first shock army, 45 combat factors against 12 of the defending uh, three Panzer Grenadier divisions there. This is a three to one attack. And the defenders are isolated, so there is a plus one. And again, with a retreat result, a defender retreat result, the defenders will be eliminated. They are surrounded by enemy zones of control. But the die roll is a one, modified to a zero. Attacker retreats. The three surrounded Panzer Grenadier divisions live to fight another day. And the Soviets retreat all attacking units and we flip them to their disrupted sides. And that's the end of the attacks of the WR front. And we saw that uh, a unit of the, two units of the Kalinin front participated there. So we're going to spend an activation point to uh, activate the Kalinin front for attack. We should have done that before, but now we will proceed to resolve other attacks by the Kalinin front. So mixed results for the WR front in this second turn and their combat situations. Now we move to the attacks by the Kalinin front. Not very promising the picture here. All these attacks against these units would be one to one attacks. And without that surprise bonus, the Russians will simply pass and will not attack with other units of the Kalinin front. It remains to be seen if any attacks will be conducted here in the area where there used to be a gap in the previous turn. And the same situation applies. It's one to one, the best odds that can be achieved. So the Kalinin front conducts no further attacks in this turn. Now let's take a look at the Northern front. There's two uh, decent attacks here against these two units. So the Soviets spend a seventh activation point to activate the Northern front for attack. So we start with the attack of these three Soviet units against this German infantry division in woods. A three to one attack with a minus one. A one modified to a zero attacker retreats. So the Soviets retreat, but they still have two units across the river. The next attack by two Soviet units against a German division, the 32nd in wooded terrain. This attack is even less promising, two to one with a minus one because the defenders are in wooded terrain. Four modified to a three, contact, and all units remain as they are. That's the end of the attacks of the northern front, and that's the end also of the Soviet combat phase. And you've seen uh, many mixed results, some surprises where the Germans have held their ground. But still the situation is critical for the Germans. There are many gaps to plug. Soviet first shock army will not withdraw this turn. This is turn two. There is no airborne phase, nor is there any partisan phase. And we proceed now to the recovery phase. And there were a significant number of Soviet units that were disrupted in this turn at, while attacking. So they will be flipped to their uh, regular or non-disrupted side. This includes the Soviet units and the attack against Sukhinichi as well as the Soviet units that participated in the attack against the surrounded three Panzer Grenadier divisions. And finally, we flip the disrupted units of the Northern Front. And that's the end of the recovery phase. That's the end of Soviet turn two. And now to the German turn.